Oh, hey, how's it going? I didn't see you guys there. Welcome home. All right, all joking aside, you guys, welcome home, welcome back. I'm super stoked to be back. We're gonna start this first video out getting right into it. One of my subscribers from the last channel that I had from my Welcome Home channel asked me a, a question that I unfortunately couldn't answer. And the question itself reads as thus. Do you think an enlightened person can struggle with addiction or suicide? And my answer is, first we have to define what an enlightened person is. An awakened person is not enlightened by any means. Someone who is awake is simply, literally awake. They have come to terms with life as being some type of simulation, some type of game that is not as real as it seems, only slightly real. Um, once you have awakened from the dream, now it's time to go out into the quote-unquote real world and do the things. Um, to be completely honest with you guys, No. An, an awakened person is not going to struggle with addiction. Or an enlightened person is not going to struggle with an addiction. An enlightened person... Well, addiction comes about a lot of the times when we find ourselves separated from the rest of the world. And there's many a test link to this topic. And you can... You know, a quick 10 minute Google search will show you that. Well, they did a test with mice where they showed mice when isolated from the rest of the pack are far more likely to become addicted than mice that are integrated with the rest of the pack. They even integrated those mice back into the pack and the uh, addictions were reversed. So first and foremost, when, you, when you're thinking about addiction, you have to see that addiction is about separation. It is about not understanding oneness. So if you're enlightened, then you absolutely know that this reality is an illusion, and we are, in fact, all connected. We all stem from the same exact thing, so no one enlightened person cannot suffer, should not suffer, but cannot suffer from addiction. Now, the second question ties into this uh, that the no-named subscriber wanted to know about. It says, uh, do you think desire to isolate oneself is a reflection of a strong ego, which makes everyone else the enemy, and seeks to create separation? Or do you feel that it's okay to remove yourself from people and situations that pull you away from consciousness? So let's start with the first part of this. Uh, do you think desire to isolate oneself is a reflection of a strong ego? Yes, absolutely. Um, ego's role is to separate. Now, this is going to go into a different teaching, a different area of philosophy called uh, Hermetics. Now this teaching, even the, the Kabbalah, Hermetics, got everything. Everything says the same thing. And I'll break it down for you guys. The ego is a way that um, God or oneness, you know, the all, the ego is the way in order to have the illusion of separation, in order to have an experience of reality from an individual standpoint. So I'll say that again. The ego is the lens. You have oneness that's all-encompassing. And then oneness kind of squeezed itself through consciousness, right? It squeezes itself through. And then each one of these new little points is a consciousness. See, the source down here is still oneness, right? We all come from oneness, but we are having this experience of individuality. The ego is what gives us this experience of individuality. Now to say the desire to separate yourself, I would say yes, absolutely. It is definitely an egotistical thing to want to separate yourself because that is the role of the ego is to separate. We can only have an experience, a unique experience, if we are individualized. You take away the ego, you take away individualization, and you take away experience. You're back to oneness. So ego is not a bad thing, right? Ego out of control is a terrible thing because it's also lack, it's also fear, it's, it's also separation. Separation is wonderful to have an experience, but again, when we see with addiction, uh, separation actually leads to addiction. So uh, moving on with the question, uh, do you feel that it's okay to remove yourself from people and situations? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, 
time spent alone is time to recharge. Empathetic people uh, feel this a lot. You go to nature, go to the beach, go to your room, meditate. This is all, all right, I'm shutting out the inside world and I'm going inside to connect with source, to connect with myself and to disconnect from the things out there. There's nothing wrong with wanting to separate yourself from people and situations. As long as you're doing it to recharge and not as an escape, you're not running from something. Uh, because, because the question says to remove yourself or people that, that pull you away from consciousness. Nothing can really pull you away from consciousness. Remember, the separation from oneness is an illusion. It's real, you know, in that we are in it. And, you know, if you die, you die. You know, if I, if I stab myself with my fountain pen in the hand, it's going to hurt like hell. That experience is real. Um, but at, at source, we cannot be pulled from consciousness. And that's what I would like you to really get from this. Because you ask, uh, people pull me away from consciousness and situations pull me away from consciousness. If you get into that mindset, it's almost like good versus bad, them versus me. You know, it's a war between two different things, but things aren't different. At source, we're all one. So, believing that something can pull you away from from oneness will allow it to pull you further away from oneness in the illusion of oneness, leading to things like addiction and whatnot. But understanding the truth, simply, that there is no spoon. Just kidding, that was a Matrix joke. Hopefully you got it. No, but the truth is, it's, it's, it, it is all an illusion, and we are all one. You are never really separated by anyone at source. So that should be a saving grace for a lot of you who are dealing with depression or separation issues or social anxiety issues. And, and you, at the same time, you're on this path of growth and self-development and consciousness and spirituality and things like that. That's good to know that you are never actually separated from anyone else. So to recap, uh, first question, enlightened people? No. I believe by definition an enlightened person should not, in fact, struggle with addiction or suicide because to be enlightened is to see past the issues that would lead to suicide in the first place. We'll use an example of, say, a lover breaks up with someone and the person is heartbroken and they commit suicide. Now, an enlightened person, if they were had someone break up with them, they would understand in the first place that that person was never theirs to own at all. Uh, the way I see it with relationships is almost thank you for being here while you decide to be here. I love who you are. I love how you treat me, I love how you make me feel, and I love that you are allowing me to share your presence. I love that you are giving me the time of day to, to have this experience. You might not be here tomorrow, and that's okay, because you have things to do, I have things to do, or you might be here for the rest of my life. I don't know that either, that would be wonderful too, but I, I don't know those things. What I do know is that I am grateful for the time that we do share together. I am grateful for um, the moments that we have and, and, and how you've allowed me to grow. And I'm just grateful for, for that. And whatever else comes is a bonus. See, that's something, you know, not an enlightened person, because I'm not enlightened, but that's something that a person would acknowledge that's past the, the, the attachment that this is mine, that lover is mine, and you're mine, and you can't talk to anyone else, and you can't leave me because you're my source of happiness, and if you go, we'll be crushed forever. That kind of thought pattern leads to suicide. Um, that uh, type of thought pattern leads to addiction, it leads to depression, right? So an enlightened person would not be led to depression or suicide or addiction because it's almost like a preemptive strike, if you will. Now, I would say that an awakened person would be prone to suicide or uh, addiction or depression because to, to me an awakened person is someone that's not really good at handling um, the new paradigm of thought the non-attachment um, the desirelessness these types of things but but they're awakened enough to see that they can't live the old way it's almost like they're caught in this world in between to me I, I feel an awakened person is more likely to be prone to, to suicide and depression than most because 
They have pulled away from the old paradigm and they don't know where to go next. So they are isolated because they don't have the old and they haven't quite yet developed the new. So absolutely, uh, an awakened person is absolutely prone to addiction. And we see that a lot. I've had a lot of friends that go through this. Some people call it the dark night of the soul where it's, holy shit, I have awoken to the truth and I don't know if I can handle it or I, I can handle it, but I don't know for how long I can handle it. Does it get better? Does it get worse? Um, where do I go from here? Is there anywhere to go from here? Is there any hope? Is, is it hopelessness? What is it? So, um, thanks for the question. And I'm so, uh, again, uh, like and subscribe if you guys are new. And if you guys are old from my old Welcome Home channel, I'm so stoked that, that we're here again and that we're making videos again. Um, thank you. You subscribe and like and share this video if you think it'll help someone and um oh i'm just stoked to be back you guys welcome home <laughs> welcome back and i'll see you soon see you next time